Right, this time we're going to take a look at one of my personal favorite ships from the Star Trek universe. It's the Defiant. Start off with the maneuver dial. A decent picture. Still a little dark. A little small. Uh, it's got some interesting maneuvers we can make. I do like the fact that in wave one here they've fixed the holes in the center of the dial where you put these pegs in and they turn much easier now. Got that three come about, which is nice. Take a look at the uh, actual maneuvers here. Much better picture of the Defiant there. Quite a maneuverable little ship. Would like to see it a little bit faster. Maybe some four banks and turns in there, but... There we have our named USS Defiant. Defiant class, it's unique. Federation. A little low on the attack for what I was assuming, but uh, still respectable. Uh, three attack, two two of a, or agility, three hull, four shield, which is nice. Uh, 24 points. We've got a decent upgrade package down here. we got one uh, tech upgrade, two weapon upgrades, two crew upgrades. We have evasive, target lock, um, scan, and battle stations. And this is probably what makes the Defiant stand out as its special ability. You basically get to ignore critical hits, which is amazing. Especially if you're using the cloaking device, which we'll get to in a minute. Then we have the standard generic Defiant class. Doesn't lose a lot in the way of stats. I think you lose one shield. And you lose the cool ability, but uh, you also lose a crew slot. But it's down to 22 points. Now for crew, I, I still complain about this, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Um, start off, you've got Benjamin Sisko, who's unique. He's Captain Skill of 6 with an elite um, talent upgrade. 4 points. Once per round, you may reroll any of your attack or defense dice. Nice ability. Not as powerful as some of the other... Uh, other ones out there, but would have been nice to see him get a fleet type ability like Denatra since he did command the entire fleet when they went to uh, retake DS9. We've got uh, Kieran Reese, also unique. Three, uh, only a command skill of three. This is the interesting part of where she has Bajoran faction, two points. Now her ability, I'm going to skip to the end here, the actual last line of her ability says if you put her on a Federation ship, you don't have to pay the penalty, which is why she comes with a Federation ship. But here, basically, if a uh, crew upgrade on an enemy ship would cause you to discard or disable any of your upgrades, you roll two defense dice. If one of those two is a, a um, evasive, you just ignore that effect. Nice way to get around some of those. And then we have our generic Federation captain. Now my complaint was being that Worf is not a captain. Now I we know we're going to be getting a work Captain Worf come uh, the next wave when we get the Klingon Bird of Prey. But still, he, he should have been a captain for the Defiant. Speaking of Worf, here he is in his non-captain form. So it's a little better than the one that came with the Enterprise. Um, Target a ship at range one, that ship rolls two less attack dice this round. But then again, it takes your action for the turn, so that's totally up to you. He's unique, three points in Federation faction. We got another Miles O'Brien, this one from the DS9 series. He's also unique. He's five points, Federation, and you can disable him to repair up to two shields. But you can't attack that round. This comes in handy in a situation where you don't have anything to shoot at anyway. Why not? The only downside is it does take your action. But it can be used in combo with a couple of the other cards. So um, he's, he's actually good on the Enterprise with Picard. So you can take Picard's action to still do an action for the ship. And then him to uh, repair. And we have Jedzia Dax. One of my favorite incarnations of Dax. Uh, Spore points. Uh, Federation faction. And you can disable her to perform an additional two maneuver for this round. Forward or banking. And uh, you can't attack. 
I'd like to point out one thing with these, especially Worf and Miles, this is the first time we've gotten duplicates. But uh, because they are unique, you can only have one Miles O'Brien or one Worf in your fleet. Doesn't matter which one, if you take this or the one from the starter set, but you can only have one. So you can't put this Worf on the Defiant and the other Worf on uh, the Enterprise. Which makes sense. The Defiant comes with a pair of really nice elite uh, talents here. Uh, the first one is Attack Pattern Delta. It is unique. In fact, I believe all of the up, uh, elite talents from now on are going to be unique. It was something that uh, Andrew Parks said in a post. This one's Three Points Federation. You disable this card to reroll your entire defense roll. You must reroll all the dice and keep the result of the second roll. No one has its uses. This one's the better of the two. Attack Pattern Omega. If you damage an opponent's hull with a critical, you may immediately discard this card and search the damage deck for a Warp Core Breach instead of drawing a random card. And then you reshuffle the deck. It's three points for Federation. This one basically, if you get a hit, it gives you an automatic Warp Core just breach on your opponent just for uh, getting a critical in there. You can only use it once a game, but it has its uses. I mean, you can get a lucky critical on the first turn and give somebody a Warp Core Breach. Well, probably on the second turn. I don't see much fighting ever going on on the first turn, but you get the idea. For weapon upgrades, we have Photon Torpedoes. Pretty much standard fare for Federation ships. Uh, five points, two to three range, five attack. You have to have a target lock, and you can convert one of your battle stations to a critical hit. This is a way to get that critical in so that you can trigger the attack pattern Omega. Quantum Torpedoes, which come with the uh, Defiant here. First time we've seen these. They're uh, range 2 to 3, 5 attack, need a target lock, 6 points. Um, if the ship is hit, you get to add an extra hit to the total damage, and they can be fired from the front or rear arc. Very nice uh, weapon there. And this is what everybody wanted to see in a Defiant, a cloaking device. And I like the fact that they made this optional because not all of the Defiant class ships cloaked. In fact, only one of them did. So instead of performing your normal action, you can disable this card and perform a cloak action. While you're cloaked, you may perform the uh, sensor echo action. When you do it, you have to disable this, which makes it slightly um, worse than a normal cloak because you have to spend a turn to, to re-enable this before you could fire and then re-cloak again. Um, this costs uh, extra five squadron points for any ship other than the USS Defiant. Now that's a key word there. It's not the Defiant class, it's the USS Defiant. So the named version only can get this for four points. Even the generic version of a Defiance class ship still has to pay the bonus five point penalty. Which I think is smart. It makes this limited to the named ship pretty much. As it should be. As for token wise, you got your four shields. Uh, target lock L this time. You've got your battle stations, scan, evasive maneuver, your um, critical hit and auxiliary power tokens. A ton of disabled tokens, some for the one for the cloaking device, one for each of the torpedoes. Uh, I believe there's one for decks and something else. So, lots of, uh, one of the attack patterns, I think. Yeah, attack pattern Delta uses it. That's where the other one goes. And, of course, you got your extra flight peg down there. The mission for this expansion, protect the Alpha Quadrant. Um, it's a little Dominion War-based one. Fits in good with the current OP event. It's an interesting uh, scenario. Haven't got a chance to play it. I've read through it though. So that one's entertaining. And then of course the figure. The model itself is huge compared to what it should be, but if it was real size, I think people would be disappointed in spending the 15 bucks for the expansion. Decently detailed. Uh, they didn't do anything on the warp nacelles. They did the same thing I think they did with the Klingon uh, D7. In Tactics, there were two versions of this ship. 
There's the non-cloaked, more detailed model, and the cloaked model, which they used to make the mold for this. It's kind of a disappointment because the non-cloaked one had a lot of detail on the nacelle intakes, and it seems to be a reoccurring theme, though. And then last, we have the base here, or the Defiant. You can see the rear firing arc, which are very rare to come by these days. And then there's your generic Defiant class, which still has the rear arc, which is nice. Well, there you go. That's a look at the Defiant. Uh, first ship in our Wave 1 videos. And uh, we'll get on to the others, and I'll see you in the next video.